Greg Parker. I'm a recovering drug addict, and I'm here to talk to you a little about uh, what I went through, and possibly what I can do to help you. Yeah, I'm uh, 48. I started using when I was 16. And let me tell you, like uh, most of you, uh, started using because we want to fit in, you know. Uh, I didn't have a lot of people talking to me when I was young. Okay, through high school, junior high, grade school. I didn't have very many friends, so when I started using drugs, I, I felt like I was a part of something, you know. Uh, like a lot of you, you know. And there was a lot of things that led up to that. And like a lot of you, my parents were divorced, okay. Uh, raised by my mom, and then I'd go with my dad and live with him for a while, and back and forth and such. And then, you know, I smoked a lot of marijuana every day, but then I started doing acid, uh, LSD for those who didn't know the lingo back then, we called it acid. And uh, it was a great time, you laugh a lot and you know, uh, see things that ain't there, but after a while, those things that you see that aren't there stay with you. And even when you're not doing acid, you're still seeing, they call them flashbacks. And uh, I experienced a lot of those because I did, well, I'll be honest, I did too much acid, okay? You can do too much, and nobody coached me on how much to do, and, and, and it messed me up. It messed my stomach up. It, it, it made me cramp up all the time. I, I couldn't think right. Uh, it's really a bad thing. Um, and how it really happened, a guy said, hey, just here, take this, you know? And I was like, well, what is it? He says, just take it. So I took it. And uh, I gotta, I gotta admit, that's the worst thing I've ever done. Then I started using cocaine and uh, started snorting it like a lot of you did and uh, give you a cheap thrill for about 45 minutes and then of course you want more, you know. So uh, then I got introduced to crack and uh, started smoking it on a regular basis all, all day every day and uh, learned how to cook it. Well, to make a long story short, I lost everything I had, twice. Uh, you know, I did some bad things, you know, steal, off your parents, and, well, not your parents, but my parents, and, uh, uh, well, just, I feel pretty bad about that, you know, and, uh, of course, if my mom was still alive, I'd be apologizing her as much as I possibly could, probably for the rest of my life. Uh, not only did I lose everything I had, but she lost a lot of things she had too. So, uh, crack is a bad thing. Cocaine, period, is a bad thing. And, uh, wish we never started it, you know. Well, you know, I, I held many jobs. I couldn't keep a job because, well, I was doing drugs. And, uh, you know, at the time you're doing drugs, you don't think it's affecting you, but it really is affecting you. And then, uh, well, we got into a band, and uh, we did some pretty good gigs. We did, we did some bars, and uh, we did some colleges, and uh, it was a really good time. And the drummer was heavy into drugs, and... Well, we all were. We were all heavy into drugs and uh, alcohol, the whole bit. And, 
Well, and the drummer, he was heavy into black magic and all that, and we kind of, you know, started mingling with that a little bit, and then one day, it just, it was like, it was like the next day, it just seems like he fell on his knees and found Jesus, and well, it broke the band up, and we were all pretty upset over that, and uh, couldn't believe it happened, you know, because, well, we were blind too, and uh, and then I got into methamphetamines, and uh, I've, I've seen some bad things, and uh, lost all my teeth, and my dentures, and uh, you know, people sit there and they're shooting it up. I never shot up personally. I smoked it, you know, snorted it. It's a wonder I got any nostrils at all. Got a sense of smell, you know, and. I've seen, they, they shoot that stuff in their arms and they sit there and they just, like a stone, they just, you know, and they're sitting there for eight, nine, ten hours. And I remember what I was doing, you know, of course, like I said, I was smoking it and snoring it. Well, you're up for three or four days, you know, and then you wonder why you're losing your mind when you need sleep, you know. Well, you don't know that, you just keep doing more. friends over that too. Uh, people were scared of me. They actually thought I was crazy, which I think I was. And uh, couldn't hold a job at all then. You know, all I wanted to do was meth. And uh, believe me, I've done a lot of it. Not proud of it. Not at all. And uh, I gave up my family for all these drugs. I just want to let you people know that. Don't do that, okay? Family's all you got, all right? Um, you know, I've done pills. I've done some drugs that I even invented, okay? Uh, it's a bad thing. You know, seriously. Don't do drugs, okay? And then... Something good happened to me. I spilled my guts to my doctor one day. And he sent me to this place called Open Door Worship. Where I found God. And it literally changed my life. I actually have a purpose in my life now. And uh, best feeling in the world. Now I'm not a preacher. And I'm not going to sit here and preach to you. But don't knock it till you try it. It's just the way it is. Try it. You might like it. I have known Greg for 60 days. He called me one evening, desperate for some help. Said he was referred to our program. Wanted to know if I could help him, and I told him I couldn't, but the Lord could. And he said he didn't quite know about the Lord. He didn't know about that subject. That him and the Lord had some issues. And I told him that was just fine. Come on anyway. So he came. And he's been coming ever since. He's got involved with the church. Doing the sound. Become active. Become a part of. Instead of just sitting on the pew. He has picked up his 60 day chill. It's brighter. More um, involved, I should say. Every 